Medications for Rapid Sequence Induction by Dr. Robert Pascucci. Please note that in this video we will be following the guidelines used at Boston Children's Hospital. Some of this information may need to be modified based on the equipment, guidelines, and practices in place in your institution. Hi, I'm Bob Pascucci. I'm one of the ICU staff here at Children's Hospital Boston. What we're going to talk about today is the drugs that you might consider using in a semi-urgent intubation in the ICU setting. And I'll, I'll give you a sampling of the drugs that we use here. Some of them may or may not be available to you immediately where you are practicing, uh, but most of them are pretty commonly available and they're old, for the most part they're older drugs that aren't uh, really brand new. Introduction. One final thing you've heard about the rapid sequence induction or the RSI. It's a situation where you may want to get a tube in quickly because you're concerned that the patient is at particular risk of vomiting and aspirating during the procedure. And our standard approach to that is to do what's called a rapid sequence induction. It's really very much the same. There are a couple of extra steps. First of all, at the beginning, what the first step is in terms of judging whether a patient should get a rapid sequence induction is looking at the patient and making sure that you can do the intubation. If it's someone with a difficult airway, if it's someone with a small jaw, if it's someone with a, anything that makes you think that it would be difficult to put the tube in, then you should not do a rapid sequence induction. You should figure out some other plan with perhaps your anesthesia colleagues, a wake intubation or a sedated intubation uh, so that you don't accidentally lose the airway. Pre-oxygenation. But assuming that it's the average patient who looks reasonably easy to intubate, then you can go ahead with a rapid sequence intubation. And what do you do? Start with pre-oxygenation, mask on the face, 100% oxygen, trying to fill the FRC up with 100% oxygen. And if the average patient breathes breathes oxygen, 100% oxygen, for three, four, five minutes, then you can be reasonably certain that their FRC is full of 100% oxygen. And what you're trying to do is leave a reserve of oxygen in their lungs so that if you make them apneic for a period of time while you're putting the endotracheal tube in, they won't desaturate significantly. Um, it works well in patients who don't have lung disease, doesn't work particularly well in patients who do have lung disease because their FRC is compromised to begin with, but you can often get a little bit of extra time out of this 100% oxygen pre-oxygenation. Administering medications. So you're having the patient breathe oxygen from a mask. If it's a child, they may not particularly want to do that, but now is the time to bring in your appetizer doses of midazolam or fentanyl. It's perfectly safe to give a little bit of midazolam and a little bit of fentanyl. And as long as little Johnny is continuing to breathe well, then that's fine. And they can breathe 100% oxygen and get nicely sedated with this. When it's actually time to go to sleep and you're happy that the patient is adequately pre-oxygenated, then the rapid sequence portion of things is simply giving the go-to-sleep drug, whatever it turns out to be, flushing your IV so that you get the drug in, and then giving the muscle relaxant, and in this case it will either be succinylcholine or rocuronium, something that's going to work in 60 seconds. Point of clarification. Please note that rocuronium should be administered at a high dose and then not really trying to ventilate the patient because there's concern that if you ventilate, you may blow some air in the stomach and get vomiting, but really just letting the patient go to sleep and become paralyzed. And the fact that you pre-oxygenated them means that you don't really have to ventilate them for at least the first couple of minutes. Cricoid pressure. While the patient is going to sleep, the selic maneuver, which is cricoid pressure, pushing the cricoid back onto the trachea, trying to prevent passive um, regurgitation of stomach contents into the oropharynx, uh, is something that's useful to do. And, and there are many people involved in doing rapid sequence induction, but someone's job should be to apply this cricoid pressure, really try to compress the esophagus, <coughs> and then prevent the patient from um, passively regurgitating during the procedure. It doesn't really work well for active vomiting. So if the patient starts to vomit, then suction and turn off on the side and, and deal with that situation. Uh, but most of the time you can prevent passive regurgitation. Just again, 
pressure on the cricoid pushes the trachea back onto the esophagus and creates a block against the regurgitation. Get the endotracheal tube in <coughs> in the standard fashion after your relaxant has worked, and you do have to make sure that you give it enough time to work. Once you're convinced you're in and the endotracheal cuff is blown up, if you're using a cuff tube, then it's safe to let go of the cricoid pressure and ventilate the patient. And then at that point, perhaps drop a, a nasogastric tube to empty the stomach a little bit more. Point of clarification. Please note that the patient's airway can be obstructed if the cricoid pressure is too vigorous. Summary. So the rapid sequence induction isn't that much different from the standard induction except for the pre-oxygenation, which frankly you may well do with uh, any intubation as well. But this rapid sequence of I'm going to sleep, I'm going to be paralyzed, and you don't have the little break to make sure that you can ventilate the patient, which is probably the risky part of this rapid sequence procedure. Um, you're just assuming that you can get the tube in. Other than that, the drugs are very similar, and you would choose the drugs, I think, in the same fashion that you normally would. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.